Afternoon friends. Today is July the 25th of 2018 and I would just like to share something with you. You know one of the biggest things that Jesus compared his return to was that it would be like the days of Noah would be like the days of Noah we've heard that <laughs> just about our whole life it's gonna be like the days of Noah well one of the things about the days of Noah was this from the time that Noah first warned the people of a coming flood that is or a coming time when it would begin to rain that is if he warned them soon after God told him about it then the people had at least a hundred years of watching Noah build the ark now I want you to think of this in our mentality if something doesn't happen really quick we go off and forget about it or we lose interest in it and that is the reason why news is so uh, popular because it's news every day we want to know the news we want something new every day we want to hear something new we don't want the old we want new tomorrow we want to know what's new and 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 that's just how our minds are you think of that now you know we want new we don't want old we don't want antique stuff we just want it new we want it fresh we want it live you know it's not you know let, let's say you miss watching a sporting event and if someone was to say well you know so-and-so won the game even though you did not watch the game you really wouldn't want to watch it now because you know who's going to win even if it was your favorite team won, knowing the outcome just kind of just takes away the excitement of watching it live and the reason that I'm trying to drive this home to you is this that is the dilemma that the people in Noah's day and more so in our day that we face for at least a hundred years Noah was working on the ark the boat and even after Noah entered the boat and the animals seven days they still had to wait but a day came when God himself shut the door and the rains came and took them all away you know you can only imagine what the people were saying as water began to come out of the sky I imagine they were extremely shocked I would imagine they were extremely terrified because they already knew what was going to happen that judgment 
did in fact begin. And they were not wise enough to listen to the man of God. Did they mock Noah? I would imagine they did. Did they ridicule him and, and scoff at him and tell him he was crazy that it would never rain? I could uh, only imagine that they did. So come to 2018. In the last hundred years, you think of this, take a hundred years away from the year 2018 and you come to the year 1918. Well, friend, in 1914, if I remember right, or 1912, either 1912 or 1914, the Titanic sunk, which was just a few years after the turn of the century. Think of the technology and the advancements man has made from the year 1918 to the year 2018. And I can assure you of this, in the year 1918, the men of God and holiness and godliness from the people who claim to be born again children of God is how they lived. They lived a life of consecration. They lived a life of sanctification. They believed in living a life holy unto the Lord. But now you have a lot of worldly churches that they don't preach at. They don't teach holiness unto the Lord. They don't preach, come out from among the world and be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and be a father unto you, and you will be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. They don't, they don't preach those things. So now we're in 2018. It's been a hundred years since 1918. And you know what we got? We got scoffers and mockers and atheists who say, Where's the promise of His coming? It's never going to happen. The rapture will never happen. You bunch of Christians, keep looking for Jesus. He's never going to come back. We got a Pope right now that says the same thing. We got a Pope that tells you you shouldn't be reading your Bible. You don't need to put your trust in Jesus that Jesus was a big failure on the cross? Man! <laughs> you talking about living in the last days. The same way. You listen to this. I'll give you a more recent comparison. If the day before if the day before 9-11, if you would have said, you know what, I think that the Twin Towers are going to be destroyed, people would have laughed in your face. If you would have said, I got a feeling that one day the Twin Towers or airplanes are going to fly into the Twin Tower and destroy them. Oh my gosh, you would be ridiculed, you would be laughed at. We would say that can't happen because they are well protected. Nothing would, our government would not let anything come near the Twin Towers. That will never happen. You're an idiot 
for even thinking that. But you know what? I witnessed on TV the second one being hit by the plane. And of course, you have too. Or at least have watched videos of it. After it happens, uh, it's not so amazing, is it? Yeah, after an amazing thing happens, you get accustomed to it. Now we're not so surprised if something like that would happen. Because it's already happened. And let me tell you this, my friend. There's coming a day when the trumpet of God will sound and those who are born again living for Jesus Christ and have made him their Lord and Savior, they will disappear off of the face of this earth. And this world's gonna look around and be shocked like they were the morning of 9-11. They're gonna be in disbelief because what had been preached about for 2,000 years has happened. And what is so amazing is that that will be just the tip of the iceberg. Because after that, <laughs> literally all hell is going to break loose on this earth. The man of sin is going to come on the scene and he will bring forth a new world order where he will eventually be worshipped as he sits in the new rebuilt temple of God in Jerusalem declaring to the world that he is God. That is going to be one arrogant, demon-possessed man. So what is the meaning of all this? Here's the meaning. For those of you who are born again, ready to go, friend, it's not going to be much longer. For those of you who are atheists, scoffers, unbelievers, you are going to be like those that were left behind as it began to rain and the ark floated up and away. Christ is going to rise us up in the clouds. We will meet Christ in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And you, because of your pride and your arrogance and the foolishness of your mentality, that you dare reject such great salvation that Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago for you. You reject such great salvation. You will find yourself on this earth left behind. You will possibly be able to watch this video again unless YouTube begins to delete all of these videos and you will realize how foolish you were. And the only reason that I make these videos 
is twofold. To encourage my fellow brothers and sisters to get out and share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with the amount of time we have left. Not to lose hope. Because our salvation is nearer than it's ever been. And the main reason is that hopefully the Holy Spirit will prick the hearts of some of you who watch these videos and will open your eyes to the deception that Satan has got you blinded that you might see the truth of Christ Jesus, that he died on the cross. He died on the cross for your sin and for mine. You see, many people went up to the cross and said different things as they stood before Jesus on the cross. What will you say? Will you be one who scoffs at Jesus and walks away? Or will you be one who was like the thief? Who realizes that you are a sinner and you need Christ as your Savior? Because what we do with the sacrifice of Jesus Christ will determine where we spend eternity. Will you accept Jesus Christ that your name will be found written in the Lamb's Book of Life? That you may gain access to eternity living with our God? Or will you in your rebellion and pride, reject salvation to receive the same punishment that Lucifer will receive, which is to be cast into outer darkness out of the presence of God Almighty. Friend, I pray that you receive the Lord Jesus Christ that his spirit will open your eyes that you might see that Jesus loves you. He died for you. God bless each of you, I pray.